One last example of linear independence I want to talk about uh, in, I'm going to have you verify all the details here, but you can check that if you have two exponential functions, e to the x and uh, e to the bx, then f and g are linearly independent if and only if a is not equal to b. So if you have two distinct exponential functions, they're linearly independent. One's not a multiple of the other. Of course, if a is equal to b, then they are linearly, ind linearly independent because they're the same function. So uh, that's easy to check. Um, one other reason uh, to talk about this, actually two other cases that are gonna be relevant for us. If you have e to the ax and g of x is x, e to the ax, those are also linearly independent. One's not a multiple of the other. One's not a constant multiple of the other. Okay, so those are linearly independent. By the way, the first example was linearly independent everywhere. Same with the second example. And then the final example that's gonna be useful for us uh, is you can also check that if you were to take a uh, sine of some constant, say uh, uh, ax, in g of x is cosine of ax. Those are also, those are, can't spell, can't write. Those are linearly independent also on all of our. Okay, so if you just compute the round scheme, you get that all of these quantities, uh, the round scheme of all these quantities is not identically zero. So that means that uh, they are all gonna be linearly independent on R. So all three of these examples are gonna be very relevant for us. Uh, we've already seen how exponentials are going to play a good role, a big role in chapter four when we're talking about these second order linear homogeneous with constant coefficients. Um, and then we'll see soon how these other functions are going to be relevant for what we're doing here. Okay, but that's, uh, that's, I think, everything I wanted to say about linear independence in the round scheme.